I was very glad that we were being, we were under surveillance because if we weren't under surveillance, we must have been not doing something. You know, and we were under surveillance because we were having an effect. You know, so and the more surveillance, the best, better, the better the effect we must be having. Um, so. People who say, oh, don't you object to you know, having all your mail opened and your phone listened to? Why should I object? I was informing them of my presence, and they were informing me of theirs. That's great. That's good. That's symbiosis. I really felt upset this morning looking at uh, when I'd done my tweet this morning, I had a sort of, I went back to the home site, you know, and saw what sort of stuff was coming in, and it, and probably almost 60% of what people was tweeting was about Donald Trump, you know, very, very aggressive, very abusive, all sorts of stuff which is going to have no effect whatsoever except upsetting other people further. People who are already afraid, already upset, already this, already very negative, already despairing, already unhappy. What's the point of adding in yet another comment to make them even more unhappy and fearful? Because those aren't very good places to be. It's not a good place to be unhappy and fearful. So why does the alternative world concentrate so much on the negative? If we want to create an alternative society, then we have to find something positive which is more powerful than the negative. And there is something, it's called love. <laughs> and it's very simple, you just do it. You know, and by doing it, then bit by bit, you know, that sense of power, that sense of control just crumbles. It has to crumble. You can't survive against that. What does massive opposition mean? Those people are built to deal with massive opposition. They don't, you know, it, it, it confirms their power. Donald Trump would have been very upset, indeed, if people hadn't rallied in their thousands. And it doesn't matter whether they rally in opposition or support. They're both doing the same thing and they're empowering him. That's what gives him his power. We hang him his power on a plate. If none of us were in the least bit interested, then there wouldn't be a Donald Trump. He's a sort of complete figment. He's a, he, he is the sort of manufacturer of our fears and our hopes, our hopes and fears. On the one hand, he's the manufacturer of hope, on the other, of, of our hope. Or on, the un on the other hand, is the manufacturer of our fears, one or the other. And if we buy into one or the other, then we're a part of that. That's our complicity. So, I mean, we know that all, I mean, on, on, on an economic level, great nations, great nations, um, you know, require opposition. You know, when the Berlin Wall fell, it was within within months um, the enemy of Islam had been invented because the whole um, industrial, military industrial complex depends upon that form of un, unactive, generally speaking, conflict because that's a huge amount of the market is built around the military you know so once russia was no longer the great threat then effectively a new threat was invented created which was islam you know they up to that point you know there was a sort of relative peace along the great side of, of muslim thought from you know morocco all the way through Asia to India and beyond. Suddenly, you know, there's this huge, it's a far greater wall than the, you know, the wall between communism and capitalism. Capitalism had to find a new enemy. It found this. 
And the thing it didn't calculate on was the fact that that's an unbreakable. Communism is a sort of intellectual idea. Islam's a faith. And you don't break faith very easily. You can break ideas very easily. You know, so they, it was America took on this dangerous enemy and is proving to lose hands down all the way and will continue to actually. It's choosing the wrong enemy. <laughs> so in that sense, you know, Donald Trump's, you know, you, you could sort of, in a way, you could sort of think, well, if he's being honest about his isolation, you know, he wants to return to an America that is America to, to uh, stop fighting other people's wars. Then if, if that, which is probably not going to be the case, but if that were the case, that the interests of America simply um, became effectively defensive, and I'm not saying that these are worthwhile, I'm not saying it's a process that could occur. In other words, the Mexican wall takes the place of the great wall of Islam, then that would be a very a help towards world peace. Because this imaginary wall would be replaced by a physical wall and a physical wall can be climbed over. You can't climb over an imaginary wall. No one can. You can't do anything with an imaginary wall because it's an imaginary wall. And you go on imagining, if it falls down, you can imagine it comes up again. Much better to have physical walls. That's why they, that's that's how and why the Berlin Wall fell. The great line between communism and capitalism was a physical thing and it was removable. Let's have them. Let's have our ideas constructed into form and then we can maybe deal with it. We can say no we don't actually don't like look at that. Let's pull that building down. Replace it with another or whatever we're gonna do. But ideas dangerous stuff. I mean, effectively, you could argue, and I have argued before, that any idea is a bad idea. You know, he's just another person playing silly games, you know, and that's what it is, really. And we allow them to do that. Well, fine. Okay. I mean, I've never understood, you know, like, uh, at that huge rally against the Iraq war, there were millions of people turned out in the streets there. It was one of the biggest protests ever in Britain. Well, I would guess that probably at least 70% of the people on that march had voted in the last election. Well, don't go then dancing up and down saying, not in my name. Because the moment you put a, a tick, and it doesn't matter whether it's a for or against on an election, on a ballot card, you have become part of that system. You're actually... Um, buying into a sort of lie of democracy by just a tick. That's it. You know, you cannot, beyond that point, complain about the outcome. And it's all very well. You, most of those people who were on that protest would say, we believe in democracy. Well, like it or not, Donald Trump got into America through democratic means. Democratic means happens to actually, in reality, mean huge amounts of capital, huge amounts of propaganda, etc. But that's the game, and everyone's playing it. You know, and it's an accepted game. And if you're not going, if you're going to go on buying into that system, you can't have half or a little bit of that system. That system is that system. Get real. So, do you think that not voting has merit? Mm. Hmm. It has merit in the same way as not, not eating meat has merit in the same If you don't believe that animals should be treated badly, well, don't eat them. It's simple, isn't it? It's not going to save many animals. But if you, you, can't, you can't talk about peace and you can't talk about freedom and liberty and egalitarianism if you're not prepared to act it. You know, we, we, we can't fool ourselves. 
And we're not going to make it better because it's not there to be made better of. You know, reformist politics are a joke, you know, because the ruling elite will make whatever small concession will, which will ease the pressure. They'll never actually allow, they simply make concessions. You know, that's what democracy is about. Playing around with the edges of dissent, you know, adapting slightly to accommodate, but never actually letting go of power. You know, so, a born bummer. <laughs>